Yo, this is Zist. Today we're going to be talking about how to create and connect a new gameplay ability into the Lyra starter game system. This is not an in-depth analysis of gameplay abilities or tags or anything like that. I'm going to assume that you are either learning that or you know that already. This is about in the Lyra starter game package specifically how do we configure a gameplay ability to run based on keys being pressed? So here you can see I'm reading from my dev notes. And if you're the kind of person who prefers to read, I will link this below. You can go down. I have this whole process mapped out here. This is what I'm going to be using to make the video. So this video is for people who prefer videos. Go to the website if you prefer text. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to make a new ability that executes each time the player presses the keyboard G key. We're going to create some new assets, an input action data asset, an input tag, gameplay tag, and a Lyra gameplay ability blueprint. Then we're going to connect those assets to Lyra. So we're going to map the keyboard to the input action, map the input action to the input tag, and finally map the input tag to the Lyra gameplay ability. The end result will be pressing keyboard G will cause the Lyra gameplay ability to execute. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is create a new input action. So you can put this wherever you want. I'm going to put mine in the input folder here. So you can see I already have some stuff, including this one. We are going to make a new input action. We're going to call this IAG. Please call your something better. I suck at names. IAG is what my name is, or what mine is called. So we're going to configure this more or less like this, but we don't want this to trigger constantly. So we're going to add a trigger in here. We're going to set this to be pressed, and it's only going to trigger the first time that it's pressed. So each time you press it, it gets triggered. And we're done with that. We have IAG. The next thing that we're going to do is create a gameplay tag. And so for that, you need to go to your project settings and come over here to gameplay tags. And over here, the tag that we're going to want to create is here under input tag ability. And we're going to click this to make a sub tag. It's going to be input tag ability G. Click the add new tag button. And here we have it, input tag ability G. There it is. We're good to go. And close the project settings. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is we need to add keyboard mappings. And so you can see here in my input folder, I have this input mapping context. You may not know where this is. So to find yours, you're going to go into your map. Okay, I have this map open. In the world settings, you're going to look at the default gameplay experience, which is here. You're going to browse to this and you're going to open this up. Now, in this experience data asset, you see here there's action sets which are listed, and uh, the default Lyra game has one here. I've modified it. Uh, I have a copy which is modified. So if we click in here, this has two things. This has the keyboard mapping linked here. So this is how you know that this is the keyboard map that you have currently in use. And it also then has an input config mapped. So you're going to need both of these. So first thing you do is let's come over here and click on this. There it is. It's that one I showed you before. We're going to open this up. You're probably going to have a couple of things in here from default Lyra. You may not have this F. I did that as a proof of concept. You can just ignore that. We're going to add a new mapping here. This one is going to go to the IAG, which is the one we just created. And we want this to be mapped to the keyboard G key. And the rest of this stuff, we can just leave as is. So save that, close this. So we've done the keyboard mapping. Now we need to do the input data. And if we come in here, you see there's some native input actions. We're going to leave these alone. Don't touch these. We're adding an ability. So we want to do an, in, an ability input action. You can see I have one here already. Just ignore that. We're going to add new one. 
The new one we're going to want is the input action that we created, which is the IAG. So the input tag that we're going to want is input tag ability G. There it is. Save this. OK, so we have configured input. So now it's time to actually do the hard work, which is making the gameplay ability. So I'm putting mine here under my character. You can organize this wherever you want. Now, I already have one, but what you're going to do is right click. You're going to make a new blueprint. This is going to be Lyra gameplay ability. There it is. You want to make a new one from this, and you want to name it whatever you want. I've already done this, so here it is. We're opening this up. So first things first, uh, I did a couple of things here. Okay, The event graph, this is it. You're looking at it. Activate ability. Uh, I have this debug print function, so I'm just going to show you that right now because it's you're going to see it all over the place. This is pretty simple, right? All this does is it says every message that we print, if there's an error, it says error. tells you then what blueprint did you print it from, what actor is this ability attached to, and then it just gives you the message and it colors it. If it's an error or not an error, it's going to print it to screen and to log. So it's very simple. That doesn't matter, okay? However, coming back over here, this logic here is the is the key. So when our ability is activated, we're going to do a debug print. First thing we're going to do is end the ability right now if the commit fails. So we try this commit. If it fails, we end the ability. That's the end of that. If the commit succeeds, then if we are running on the server, or in single player mode, we're going to perform the action. Okay, This is where your action code goes. And afterwards, we're going to end the ability. If we are running on a client, we're not on the server. Instead, we're going to print this message, hey, maybe you want to do some client prediction. I don't know. It's up to you. Right? You can decide what to do here. But for now, I don't do anything. I just print, hey, I'm a client. I'm doing nothing. Okay. Whenever you call end ability from wherever you call it, this function gets run, and then all this does is it, it debugs, and it says ability was ended, and it tells us if this Boolean was true or false or what. So that's it. It's pretty, pretty simple. Um, so all this does is print log messages. OK, so now that we have our ability, it's time to add it to our ability set. So to do that, again, if you don't know where the correct file is from your map, open your experience, go into here, and in the pawn data, this tells you which file is currently being used. Here it is. And then you're granting an ability set. So we're going to open that as well. And here it is. And so granted gameplay abilities. Which abilities are we going to give our pawn? We want to give our pawn a new ability. That ability is going to be called the player G1 that you created. And it's going to be associated with the input tag, input tag ability G. There you go. Save that. So you can close all of that stuff down. And now it's time to run it. We're running this. We push the G key. And you can see immediately we got a message up here. But also, we got log messages right here. So here are the log messages. And in fact, I'm just going to search for log blueprint so we can see it more easily. So what happened? Well, this blueprint running on our Lyra player state said ability was activated, then said perform the action here, and then said ability ended. It was not canceled. So there you go. Speaking of which, let's jump back over into the ability. I didn't show you what perform action does. So here's your perform action thing, right? All mine does is print, perform the action here. So you put your code here, whatever you want. So let's see what this does now on a network. We're going to play as standalone, or as a, sorry, a listen server. 
And which one is this? So here's the client. First, let's do it on the server. There we go. So on the server, ability activated, perform the action here, and ability ended, you can see in the log down there. Okay, that's pretty, pretty good. That's what we expected. Now we're on the client, and I click G on the client, and we get a lot more stuff. So I'm just going to highlight the stuff that's for the client. So on the client, you can see here we have client says ability activated, and then the client says, hey, maybe I should do some prediction or something, you know, who knows? But then it doesn't do anything else. The server then says ability activated, hey, I'm doing whatever, and ability ended, and then the client knows that the ability ended. So you can play with this and see what kind of stuff can you do on the client, what kind of stuff can you do on the server. But here is a default implementation. This works for networked games. So as a little bonus here, I'm going to show you what does my F key do. So my F key is basically the same thing that you saw before. But instead of just printing, it grabs the owning actor, which is a Lyra player state. And it gets this component that I made. And it tells the component, hey, spawn a bot. And that's pretty much it. So if we run this, let's make this a little bit bigger. We have the client. We have the server. I push F. And there you go. The client dropped a bot, dropped another bot. So the client's dropping bots. You can see it happening on the server and on the client. The client is on the blue team. The server is on team one, which is the green team. Oh yeah, green is the best for sure. So you can see every time I hit F here, it's dropping more bots. These bots aren't doing anything interesting right now, but you can see that this is fully networked. The bots are spawning on the team of the player. So this is just an example that it is working over a network with something that you can see other than just a log message. It's not terribly complicated, but unless you know where to look and how these systems all fit together, it can definitely be confusing the first time you try and figure this out. If this video doesn't suck, please consider clicking the like button, maybe a subscribe, help others find it a little bit more easily. Either way, have a nice day. I'll catch you next time.